Hi, welcome to this tutorial where we're going to look at um, how to create a helical path um, in Revit Architecture 2011 using the new adaptive component. You may have seen a, a previous uh, a video that I did a couple of months back using 2010. I seem to have a rather unhealthy obsession with creating helixes. But anyway, here goes. Um, we're going to start off with a new conceptual mass. Uh, we'll choose uh, metric mass. Obviously, if you're using Imperial, you choose uh, an Imperial template, and we'll open that up like that. And um, first of all, we'll just set the work plane to be this level here. Um, and I'm going to actually select level one and actually hold down the Shift and Control button and the left mouse button, and we'll just drag uh, a copy up to create level two. We set the work plane again, and this time we'll choose reference, and we're going to place a reference circle on the lower level here. Okay, it's dragging out from the middle there. If we then set the top plane using reference again, setting it to circle, you'll find as you place it over, you should be able to pick up the center point um, of the circle below, and we're just going to drag out to create that circle. Select the bottom um, circle. Uh, you'll see the temporary dimension, uh, turn the temporary dimension into a permanent dimension, we'll do the same for the top one. Select that temporary or permanent dimension now rather, and we're going to label it, and we'll add a parameter, and we're just going to call that R1. Okay, and we'll do the same, and we'll select the permanent dimension there, and we'll add that as a label, the same uh, parameter, R1. Okay, so if we select this now, you should see both the two circles flex, which is cool. We'll set the work plane to be this vertical uh, reference plane here, and we're going to add in a height parameter so we can control the height of these two circles. So if I select a permanent dimension, and we'll actually add that as H1. So if we enter into our types, it's going to blitz the screen here, isn't it? Sorry about that. And we'll just change the height there. We'll make that like uh, 30 meters and apply. And you should see the two the circles actually increase. OK, so let's select the two uh, reference circles and we'll choose create form. Now we need to subdivide the surfaces here. And what I'm going to do is if I tab select the, the top of this um, sphere and we'll subdivide that and we're just going to um, change the vertical UV grid 2x2 two two. Uh, we'll select this uh, part, a uh, sort of segment and we'll subdivide this and this time it's quite crucial I need to make it 8 by 4 okay and we'll do the same for this uh, surface subdivide it and again we'll choose 8 by 4 okay so this is the basis of um, the sort of shell, I suppose, or the, the constructed um, uh, skeleton, probably a big good word for it, and that we're going to place our adaptive component on. But before I create, go ahead and create my adaptive component, we're going to actually pick the subdivided surface, and if we go into our surface representation and go into display properties, we're going to enable nodes, because the nodes that you see there are, are what we're going to... Uh, attach and snap our adaptive component onto and we'll pick this one here and do the same again good okay so this is going for us working if we were to go and flex it I had to quickly go and flex we'll change the rad here and we'll make that like 20 meters and good okay so that's working now what we're going to do is use the new adaptive component family um, We'll select that as a template so go to the big applications menu you see the big R up here and we'll choose new conceptual mass and find metric adaptive component template we'll open that and all I'm going to do is I need to place you'll see I need a total of nine points to snap around um, the, the, the sort of skeleton shape um, so we'll place nine points on this re reference plane. So it's one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now if we're lucky here, what we do can do is select these and we can do spline through points. Sometimes that doesn't work. If you've got them in the wrong order, they try and 
you'll find that the spline goes a bit wacky so try and keep them fairly equally spaced apart like I've done that uh, we'll select the whole of this and we'll filter out everything okay so losing the line and we'll just keep the reference points and now what we're going to do is with those points selected we're going to turn those into uh, adaptive points so all we do is with them selective we say make adaptive and you can see um, that I have numbers on. Now you can go and actually rename, renumber if you need to. If you if, if they've gone in the wrong order, you can easily say, well, actually that's uh, that should be nine, and you'll swap it over. But actually, if we make this nine, you should see the other one go back to eight. So that's that's working for us, which is cool. And all I'm going to do is load into project. Okay. Now you should find by default it should be snapped to the to the end of your pointer. If you drop the selection, you will not be able to pick this family up from the type selector. You're going to actually have to drag it out the the project browser. So what we'll do is we're just going to select this and we'll snap to the various different intersections. So you're going to need a little bit of clicking and picking here and rotating. And we'll just come around and we're pack picking um, at each level okay at each point okay so we should find hey presto okay we have a um, an adaptive component which is running around as a spline which is cool okay so what we're going to do is do a window tile we'll go back to our adaptive component and we're going to start adding a bit of geometry and i'll pick this little t tip up from from zach crone he would describe this uh this sort of reference line or sorry actually it's not a reference like a model line is like the analytical line um, but and then he puts a visibility parameter on it to control geometry and then loads it in so let, what it allows you to do is place the adaptive component as a line but then enable the geometry later on so it effectively makes it a little bit more lightweight to work with hopefully what I'm going to do now you'll, you'll see it a little bit better so what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to select um, my model line, and I'm going to enable it as a reference line, okay, so you can see it. Now, I'm doing this specifically because if I left it as a model line, when I create the geometry, the geometry engulfs uh, the model line, you don't ever see it again, which is a bit of a pain. So we'll leave it as uh, like that, and we'll place a point um, on the actual uh, spline here, select this, and what we'll do is we'll say always so we can actually see it now what we'll do is set the work plane okay and all I'm going to do is create a very simple circle on here I'm not too worried about the radius but you could parameterize that select the circle control select the spline and we'll choose create form so that should sweep that um, along uh, the path there now if I go to wireframe, what I want to do is select the uh, reference line and actually enable it back as a as a model line again. And it will make a little bit more sense in a second because what we're going to do is select uh, the geometry here, okay, and we're going to add in a visibility parameter, okay. So come along here, select this little button here that goes to associate parameters. We'll add a parameter and we'll say. Uh, geometry on or off okay and we leave that as a type parameter if we okay that and we okay that okay it means that we can turn turn the geometry on and off okay if we just go load it directly back into the project we're going to overwrite the existing version and its parameters okay and you should find now that uh, what it's done is swapped swapped the previous version out and included the geometry now, if we were to actually select the type of the actual the family there, um, we can go into Edit Types, and we can turn the geometry off. Okay, so we can start to place more points. Uh, sorry, more um, adaptive components. So if I came along here, and we'll say right mouse click, and we'll create similar. Okay, so if you just came along, and this time we'll pick the upper one. Okay, select here, here. Here and just keep clicking alternate points at different levels. Okay, if we go back into the family, we edit its type. This time we enable the visibility for the geometry, and hey presto, we see our two splines. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully you found that quite useful. Um, you might see um, some more sort of uh, additional 
um, graphics on my blog in the future of just me playing and, and mucking around with this particular functionality. Um, adaptive components, learn them because they are very, very cool. Anyway, take care and I hope this has been useful.